it all starts from you though, essentially. And um, I think that's one thing that stops a lot of people from getting to the point where you've got to. It's it's getting over that fear of even just putting out something like a crowdfunding, setting up that page and putting it out there. Because <laughs> I, I mean, I've never done it, and I can I can imagine that you set your goal, you know, you you do your calculations, how much I'm gonna need, or just how much I would like. You put it out there, and you're just you know almost I don't know if you're just clicking the refresh like has someone has someone pledged it? Has someone pledged it? What like how, what does that feel like? Um, like and why did you even go through the, the crowdfunding? Um, way in the first place the, the pathway well yeah. I had I did have some savings that I'd been putting aside to put towards my own music for a while um, but when I realized the quality you know yes this is my debut in terms of my original music but you know I'm not a new kid on the block in terms of, of being a singer and and a performer I've mm-hmm. been doing it for 10 plus years so for me to put something out there, I needed it to be at a certain standard. It yeah. wasn't going to be just, hey, here's me playing around with a rough demo. I wanted, you know, I decided that I wanted this to be as good as if a label had it yeah. and that somebody listening to it would know no different um, because that's that's what I feel I've, I've grown to in my career and that's what I feel the songs are worth. Oh, I think they're worthy of hearing. So mm. it's important to make them sound as good as possible so that, you know, they're pleasing to the ear. <laughs> so... Um, Gosh, I'm trying. I'm losing my train of thought now. I'm trying to take this back. Where, where, where was my point? Oh, the crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd been putting money aside for this, and when I realised the scope of the project, even doing an EP, which is a half album, and the money that would be required, because specifically I wanted to have the live band sound, the yeah. sound that's there with the, with the horns, um, with live drums, which obviously isn't done very often anymore in recordings, probably due to you know it's just, just money, yeah, money. Um, But that's what I wanted, at least for this first one. Like, it was really important for me to express myself. So the more I added up, you know, and and I didn't want anybody to be doing me favours and doing everything just for free. You know, I wanted to to, to pay people something, even if it was just expenses or or above in certain areas, Mm -hmm. you know, just because I do value everyone I'm working, who's working on this is incredible at their craft. And they, you know, the fact that they even did it for a discounted rate for me is incredible (laughs) and amazing. So um, that meant that I did not have enough money in my savings and I didn't want to wait anymore. You know, I'd waited for so long because I was afraid of what people would think. You know, there's always going to be people who don't like what you do. And I've let my, um, I suppose, need to be liked by people sort of dictate my whole life. And as I've gotten older and worked through things and I've I've just kind of realised that course it's nice to be liked by people but you can't really control whether someone else likes you or not but you have to like yourself and you have to like what you're doing and this it reached a point where I just needed this for me mm-hmm. you know um so I think I've digressed a lot from your question so I'm going to bring it back it's great like it's but it's, it's it's a true it's a it's something that a lot of people go through yeah it's that, whole, that whole feeling of you want to do something, but you're scared of how it's going to be received. You're scared of how people are going to totally. treat you afterwards. You know, you don't want to be, maybe you don't want to come across as a diva. No. You know, but at the same time, like, but I have something that I want to share. Totally. And I think um, in the industry, the music industry as well, you can meet some amazing people who are out there making things happen for themselves and, and lift other people up. And just, it's all about, you know, sharing the love, sharing opportunities, lifting other people up. And then you meet some other people who, um, anything you do is something, there's something critical, you know, you go on a talent show, whether that's for you or it's not, there are people who are quick to judge because you did it. And, you know, I was afraid of that sort of peer negativity for so long mm-hmm. uh, because I respect musicians. But then I thought, well, I only respect the ones who whose values, are, you know, I think are about supporting other people. If, if you're going to be an, a negative Nelly, mm-hmm. I don't really want you in my life anyway. So just, just get over that fear and do it. Um, so because I'd made that decision, I, I couldn't wait another year to raise more money myself and put uh, put money away and save. It was like, I, I have to do this now. I've been waiting my whole life. I've finally moved these blocks out of my way. The only thing stopping me really is, is the finances. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine had done a crowdfunding campaign through Kickstarter that I had um, supported her through when she, she was, um, she was uh, directing a, a show, uh, like a, a, a movie. Okay. So... Um, I just sort of thought, oh, maybe that's an opportunity and picked her brains a little bit over that and, you know, just kind of got, got, got some tips. And as soon as I really had the idea in my head, I think sometimes you just know, even if you're scared, you're like, 
yeah, that's the thing I have to do. Do you, do you ever get that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. oh man, why did I decide that was the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> because it was scary because then doing the Kickstarter campaign was obviously a lot of work as well. I don't, um, you said you've never done one, but no. there's a lot on the back end because you've got to think about the people who are going to um, support you it's all based on what you offer them, rewards for them, for mm. them, for them. So you've got to figure out how much do you need. Then you've got to take out the expenses of um, shipping it to them or creating the the reward itself for people, and make sure that you have you've estimated that correctly so that everything is included in the in the costs that you're. Yeah. That you're, you know, so that you don't yeah. end up doing the campaign and then making nothing back because yes. <laughs> you spent it all on the rewards they were giving you. Uh, they they don't. So. Um, yeah, there was aside from the fact that there was a lot of work, it was me really committing to the project and that was scary because the minute it was out there and someone was funding it, it was like, oh, I have to I have to go through. It's like yeah. it's like mass accountability, <laughs> not just like a one accountability partner, but like I had 64 backers, so 64 accountability partners who were then like, I've given you money. It was like investors. It's like I have to deliver yeah, on this product yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Um so it was good for me as well because it gave me no exit strategy you know it can be really easy to let yourself off the hook when you haven't committed to something enough or you're because you're scared or there's so many reasons that you can justify and there's none when you owe people something you know and you're and you're and you're legitimate so it's like oh gosh okay um and then so so that was really good actually to because it was like okay this is happening then (laughs) i can't i can't back out but it was also very scary because it's all or nothing so, you know, I'd see the pledges coming in. My goal, I think if I recall correctly, was £3,000 I wanted to add to the savings I had. Um, and you see the money coming in, but it's not at target yet. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're a week out and you're just under and you're thinking, oh, no, I don't want to message everybody again. Like, you, 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 are, you are really promoting it. And, and so there's that in the back of your mind as well. Like, oh that thing again I want people to like me they're just going to think I'm annoying yeah. and you know they're not going to you know, you know yeah and you've got to like just li- get rid of all that self-talk and and just believe in what you're doing and try yeah. to be really genuine if you are sharing a lot explain to people why and um apologize if they're not interested they can check back in with you in a month when those <laughs> when those feeds are out the way yeah. or whatever you know <laughs> um but then all of a sudden it just shot up like in the last two days, I went over my target. I think awesome. I raised four and a half, just over four and a half thousand pounds, and my target was three. So, have you ever heard of the eighty twenty rule? Yes. Yeah, yes. it was basically that in pure motion right there. In the last twenty percent of the time, eighty percent of it came in. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, it was it was a really good learning experience. But what it also showed me was how many people believed in me. Yeah. That that must have been a huge confidence boost for you. Massively, massively, you know, because then it's, it went from me being scared about the commitment that I'd made to being excited about sharing what I had with people who believed that I had something worth mm-hmm. offering. And so it just sort of fed back into that self-belief cycle. <laughs>